Your check, sir. Don't pay with cash. No, let me charge it to my IGT charge card. I get 25% off all my purchases with over 3,300 locations nationwide. IGT, in good taste. Tomorrow's charge card today. For further information and application, please call 1-800-4-IGT-USA. You're just 55 minutes from Merv Griffin's Paradise Island Resort and Casino in the Bahamas. The world's most complete private island resort with miles of white sandy beaches, spectacular super shows, 12 gourmet and specialty restaurants, championship golf, tennis, and water sports. Others may promise paradise, but only one delivers. Paradise Island Resort and Casino. There's no better place to play. Call your travel agent or 800-432-8807. Hey, at Sportsman's Paradise, you won't take a cut in quality to get a cut in price. Get a dive package you can trust. Parkway, Seapro, and Beauchamp, just $3.99. Save on real rollerblades, real champion sweat, and real umbro shorts. Rappy, White Stag, Columbia, and down ski jackets, just $59. Big names and low prices. That's the real deal at Sportsman's Paradise. Welcome to the Beirut Restaurant. From the moment you step in, you'll sense something very special. The finest authentic Middle Eastern cuisine in South Florida. And on Friday and Saturday, live entertainment and exotic belly dancing. The Beirut Restaurant, 1764 Southwest 3rd Avenue, five blocks from Brickell Avenue. Telephone 854-83. This is CNN. We return now to our continuing coverage of the war in the Persian Gulf. I'm Donna Kelly. I'm Lou Waters. It's 2 a.m. in Iraq and Kuwait, and wave three of the bombing blitz of Baghdad and other Iraqi and Kuwaiti targets now is underway. Pentagon officials say U.S. bombers and fighters are revisiting targets they attacked earlier, and they are claiming an 80% success rate on their earlier hits. The U.S. stock market reacted to the war today as the Dow Jones industrials bolted to their second biggest gain in history. With more of the latest developments, CNN's Dave Michael files a report. President Bush told reporters minutes before discussing the situation with his cabinet that war will continue until Kuwait is free. We're using force and we're not going to stop until he, uh, he uh, fully complies with the resolution. So let's not worry about what we call it. Let's worry about, call it, we want to make it clear, full compliance with the UN resolution, full compliance with the objectives of the coalition forces. As anti-war protesters demanded an end to the fighting during a demonstration outside the United Nations, a saddened UN Secretary General left the building, offering little hope the protesters' demands could be met. Well, the, the only way of putting an end to this uh, situation would be the Iraqi decision to withdraw from Kuwait. British news reports say a blitzkrieg-like attack against Iraqi armored positions in Kuwait is underway with heavy resistance reported from anti-aircraft batteries. Baghdad Radio claims Iraq has now shot down 55 coalition planes, but the United States counters only one U.S. F-18 is lost, as well as one British jet and one Kuwaiti jet. More than 1,200 missions have been flown. Aimed, says the Pentagon, at Iraqi command and control facilities, missile, anti-aircraft and radar installations, and the elite Republican guards. From French military headquarters, an assessment that 50% of Iraq's air force is now lost, and surviving planes will likely be grounded for the rest of the war. The reaction from Wall Street to the fighting, positive. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed up nearly 115 points, the second largest gain ever on the New York Stock Exchange. Dave Michaels, CNN, reporting. 
CNN still has not been able to reestablish communication with its three reporters in Baghdad. About seven hours ago, the Iraqi Ministry of Information ordered John Holloman, Bernard Shaw, and Peter Arnett to stop their live reporting of the bombing of Baghdad. The three had been holed up on the ninth floor of the Al Rashid Hotel in Baghdad, the last uncensored link with the rest of the world. The three stayed on the air until about 11 o'clock in the morning Eastern time today when Baghdad military censors ordered them off the air as they were describing pictures from Iraqi television. John, John uh, we unfortunately have been ordered to cease transmitting. It was an order given by the Ministry of Information. The reason for this order was military censorship. We have been told that we may no longer transmit live to our audience and that in the future, taped reports will be submit, subject to censorship. So, that's, uh, well, I don't know what to tell you, Bob Kainard and uh, Bobby Batista and our viewers. Uh, this, uh, this official, Mr. Allah, who's been a good friend to CNN for our time here, is, is now um, you know, demanding that we do something that we desperately don't want to do. Yeah. So, John, I will, I will make the decision to cut the communications because I'm a senior man here. So, for Bob Weiner and, and John Holloway and John Holloman and uh, Bernie Shaw and myself, Peter Arnett, who is signing off from Baghdad for CNN, and I hope we can resume our communication with you in the very near future. For those of you in Atlanta and up and down the network, we'll try to get back in touch with you as soon as we can. Uh, obviously, this is something that uh, is just abhorrent to all of us and uh, our journalism. We'll, we'll talk to you as soon as we can. And again, we're trying to reestablish that uh, link with Baghdad with all our might. What uh, information we're getting now is coming out of the Pentagon. CNN's Wolf Blitzer is at his post at the Pentagon with the latest from there. Wolf. Lou, at this hour, U.S. and Allied forces are revisiting many of the Iraqi targets hit on day one of Operation Desert Storm. And long-range B-52 strategic bombers are carpet bombing heavily fortified positions of the elite Republican Guard troops in northwestern Kuwait and southern Iraq. Senior Pentagon officials say the U.S. strategy is to weaken the Republican Guard militarily and thereby also undermine the confidence of other lesser trained Iraqi troops on the front lines. Among the air bases and other targets being hit right now, U.S. officials say, are military command and control headquarters and other facilities in and around Baghdad. The U.S. intelligence community has been reassessing the damage to decide whether the initial targets were completely destroyed. In addition, the U.S. is searching for any remaining Iraqi mobile Scud ballistic missiles that survived the initial airstrikes. U.S. officials claim that Iraq's fixed Scud sites were destroyed, as were Iraq's chemical and nuclear weapons facilities. But there is some concern about the mobile missiles. U.S. officials also confirm that Turkey is expected to announce soon that it will permit U.S. fighter aircraft to leave a NATO base at Inselrik to bomb targets in Iraq. During these first 24 hours of Operation Desert Storm, Pentagon officials tell CNN there were 1,332 sorties or bombing missions with an 80% success ratio. In addition, 104 Tomahawk cruise missiles were launched. But Defense Secretary Dick Cheney, while clearly pleased by the initial successes, cautions that the war is by no means over. I think it's very, very important for people to remember a number of key things that this is a very serious business, that we are in the very early stages of an operation that may run for a considerable period of time, that there have been casualties and there are likely to be more casualties. The U.S. aircraft are not only dropping bombs, they're also dropping leaflets, especially for Iraqi soldiers and civilians, leaflets in Arabic explaining what is going on, hoping to convince as many of those Iraqi troops as possible to desert. Lou? Well, there was a report, I believe you mentioned uh, some report of an uninterrupted line of armor moving towards the Kuwaiti border from Saudi Arabia. Is there anything on that? We know there are a lot of U.S. ground forces, Marines, Army units, all sorts of ground forces moving close to the Kuwaiti border. But a senior Pentagon official only a little while ago told us that none of the U.S. ground forces has yet crossed the line, crossed the border into Kuwait. There's also some debate about how great a defeat should be inflicted on Iraq. Are you hearing any rumblings of that at the Pentagon? At the Pentagon, the airstrikes are continuing. Scribes. The senior Pentagon officials, Lou, is that the airstrikes will continue with no let up in sight. An unrestrained war. Wolf Blitzer at the Pentagon. Donna? 
President Bush says that uh, we are determined to finish what we've set out to do. We want to get the latest for you from the White House and CNN senior White House correspondent Charles Bierbauer. Charles? The word has clearly gone out, Donna, to claim no premature victories. The Bush administration knows that it has yet to see Saddam Hussein's response to the bombings of Iraq and Kuwait. Moreover, the early success comes against the weakest part of Saddam Hussein's arsenal, its limited air force. If there is to be a ground war, it would be against Saddam Hussein, Hussein's strength, his army. The White House says this is a war, but when asked if he wants Saddam Hussein's unconditional surrender, President Bush said he wouldn't get caught up in semantics. We are using force, and we're not going to stop until he... Uh... He uh, fully complies with the resolution. So let's not worry about what we call it. Let's worry about, call it, we want to make it clear, full compliance with the UN resolution. The president's cabinet was briefed on Operation Desert Storm. And while the president says there will be no unwarranted optimism, he also says he thinks his forces are doing very well. I think all of us are very pleased that so far the operation is going forward uh, with with great success and uh, we keep praying that the loss of life uh, will be held at an absolute minimum. Evangelist Billy Graham, a friend of the president who spent the night at the White House, joined Bush and many of his top advisors at a prayer service at Fort Myer, a nearby army post. At the service, Graham lamented that the human race cannot settle its problems peacefully. President Bush heard only epithets from Saddam Hussein in response to the U.S.-led bombing. At the White House, the war briefings came in waves all day. Bush met with congressional leaders who put aside the partisanship of last week's debate. A declaration of war is no longer an issue. The action taken by the Congress last week was, by its terms, a specific authorization for the president to, to take the action which he did of using a military force against Iraq. The Congress will and has uh, formed total ranks behind uh, our armed forces. The president had cautioned against any feeling of euphoria, but a little crept in. In fact, I asked, where was this guy? Where was Saddam Hussein? He must have been on vacation or asleep because nothing, uh, there was no response. And maybe he didn't think we would do it. Maybe he didn't think there was a result. Despite the positive assessments here, it should be noted that an anti-war protest, which has been going on all week, continues across Pennsylvania Avenue from the White House in Lafayette Park. President Bush, meanwhile, has cleared virtually all of his schedule to deal solely with the Persian Gulf War. It is at least the focus of all his events that we know of here at the White House. And tomorrow he will go to the Pentagon for a full-scale briefing. Donna? Charles, uh, the president has a reputation of being on the phone and talking with world leaders. Do you know if he's been on the phone today talking with leaders or if he's had some uh, communications with uh, world leaders through diplomatic channels? Oh, he certainly has. Uh, I don't have a full list of them. It's hard to keep up with President Bush uh, and his uh, you know, digit dialing. Uh, he, uh, he, we know that he's talked with uh, several people. Uh, Prime Minister Major of Britain indicated that. Uh, he has, in, at least in the course of the past day and a half prior to and after the commencement of action uh, in Iraq, been in touch with, we are told, most of his allies in this operation. Charles, can you give us a sense, a comparison, if you will, uh, the protests that have been going on across from the White House, now that war has broken out, uh, can you give us a comparison how the protests are going across from the White House? Well, it's been a, an almost constant, uh, somewhat dependent on the weather, uh, which has uh, varied in the course of the week, somewhat dependent on the mood of both the protesters and the police. There were some clashes last night, uh, late in the evening. There have been some arrests. There are guidelines for uh, where and how demonstrations may take place around the White House, and they are sometimes violated, sometimes deliberately. These have not been extremely large demonstrations, uh, a couple hundred at a time at, uh, at about the most. Uh, it ebbs and flows in number. Uh, they have been generally very peaceful, uh, occasionally a bit louder. There's a drum beat over there that has been constant. And as I've said a number of times, if the president uh, cracks the windows in the White House, he can hear it too. Do they seem more agitated to you now that uh, war's broken out? 
I think that's a fair uh, way of assessing it, that there is a, a different sense of urgency. There was an uncertainty before last night. Uh, now it's uh, perfectly clear to everyone. And uh, for those who do oppose this war, surely uh, agitation, uh, increasingly so, would uh, be a fair description. All right, Charles Bierbauer from the White House. Thanks very much. Lou? We will take you to Saudi Arabia live when our coverage of the war in the Gulf continues in a moment. test driving a sterling you find another car with all of its standard features and appointments for twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars or less we'll do more than congratulate you we'll buy it for you eggnog mashed potatoes and gravy santa cookies aunt wilma's bunt cake the average american turkey can gain four to seven pounds during the holidays and, and you're probably one of them sweet potatoes so include the kellogg special k breakfast in your new year's diet dip and get the scale moving in the right direction fruit cake fruit cake fruit cake kellogg special k lose the holiday fat Hey, the boots come a long way for one day. Without a hitch. That's <laughs> not what I hear. What? At the airport. Someone swiped your wallet. Oh, right. What about your client dinner tonight? You know, you're sitting on the biggest order of the year. Is Mr. Moore here? I'm Chris Moore. I've got you a replacement card in cash from American Express. Thanks a lot. Yes. How do you do that? Only one card gives you the privileges of membership. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Here's something different. Swipes. The two-sided cleaning towels from Fantastic. One side wipes, but the other side scrubs. Swipes. They're the only two-sided towels with the power of Fantastic. The same medicine found in the prescription drug Motrin. Same as in Motrin and non-prescription strength. If you want the same medicine found in prescription Motrin, wouldn't it just be simpler to ask for Motrin IB? Non-prescription strength Motrin IB. Accept no alternatives. Leaders around the world are urging Saddam Hussein to withdraw now from Kuwait and bring the Gulf War to an early end. From Moscow, CNN's Steve Hurst reports the Soviet Union is one of those nations. Saddam Hussein Mikhail Gorbachev said Saddam Hussein bears all the blame for the outbreak of war. Speaking from his office in the Kremlin, the Soviet leader said he only learned about the attack one hour in advance after Secretary of State James Baker called Foreign Minister Alexander Besmertnik. After the notification, Gorbachev said he began a series of contacts with world leaders, including the Arabs. We were calling on them to take joint action, parallel action, to localize the conflict so as to prevent its dangerous expansion. Later Thursday, Deputy Foreign Minister Alexander Belenogov talked with reporters, saying the Kremlin was not being critical of the short notice. He also denied that Moscow intended to use the Gulf crisis as a smokescreen to cover continued repressions in the Baltic republics. <laughs> The crisis in the Persian Gulf and our internal problems. There are no, um, no connection whatsoever between them. At the American embassy, security had been beefed up after threats from Iraqis in Moscow. The street leading to the residential compound was barricaded. Ground floor windows at the old office building were shuttered. A three-person protest was the only outward sign of displeasure in Moscow of the U.S.-led attack. His sign reads, Saddam... I am with you. Security was also tightened at the British Embassy. Cars were checked for explosives before entering the compound. Muscovites expressed the full range of opinion about the attack. This woman said the Iraqi people had been duped by Saddam Hussein, just as the Soviet people had been duped by the Communist Party. Adding, uh, President Bush 
I fully support the action of President Bush in the Persian Gulf. I would like to see Saddam Hussein physically liquidated, even though I'm not a bloodthirsty person. He's a demon from hell. A soldier felt contrary-wise. Of course, it's one solution to the problem in that region. But as an army man, as a human being, I can tell you it shouldn't have been done. Kremlin solidarity with Washington is held firm right from the outset of the Gulf crisis. But just as firm has been Moscow's insistence, voiced again on Thursday, that it will not become involved militarily. Steeper, CNN, Moscow. We're going to check in now with one of the scenes of action in the Persian Gulf. That's in Saudi Arabia, where CNN's Charles Jaco is joining us now live. Charles. Yes, good evening or good morning, or it's about 20 after 2 in the morning uh, here in Saudi Arabia. There's been a major new development uh, a short time ago. Pentagon and defense sources now tell us that B-52 bombers from Diego Garcia Island in the Indian Ocean, from Turkey, and from the area in the Gulf here have started carpet bombing. That is massive destruction area-wide bombing in Kuwait. We are led to understand that B-52s were used in the first raid on Kuwait to hit the Republican Guard troop concentration concentrations, but this apparently is the first time that massive waves of the lumbering huge bombers have been used to hit Kuwait again and again. Most of the airstrikes have been carried out by lighter, faster, sleeker fighter bombers like the U.S. made F-15. The F-15 has been one of the mainstays of this attack so far. Uh, oddly enough, some of the reports we're reading from reporters out in the field say that many of the F-15 and other allied pilots believe that the anti-aircraft fire they encountered over Baghdad was far heavier than they expected. They said they did not expect the sky to be filled with lead the way it was during the raid on Baghdad, that the raids uh, encountered a great deal more resistance. Uh, so far, as far as losses go, uh, Baghdad Radio is claiming that 55 Allied planes have been shot down. The Allies only admit that three planes have been shot down, one U.S. fighter bomber, one British fighter bomber, and one Kuwaiti jet. Um, there is another bit of controversy going on here about defections, defections of Iraqi troops inside Kuwait. Uh, Kuwaiti sources, Kuwaiti resistance sources claim that some uh, Iraqi troops have been defecting and deserting their positions. But the commander of the joint Arab forces here claims there have been no Iraqi defectors. We don't uh, have any uh, uh, people or soldiers surrendered until now for the last 24 hours. Uh, we are hoping that they will come to their senses and uh, save the bloodshed. Uh, uh, there is a lot of rumors. There is also rumors about the 50 tanks coming in front of us to uh, uh, and surrendering. That is also not true yet. So until now, we uh, I would like uh, to give the facts that, you know, uh, until now, I have no comments on that thing because it's not confirmed, and for the 50 tanks, it's not uh, true yet. Well, that creates a bit of controversy because uh, political sources from both Saudi Arabia and the exiled government of Kuwait claim it is true that there have been a large number of defections. No one knows for sure because no one has been up in the area around Kuwait yet. All we do know for sure is right now the third wave of bombing against targets in Iraq and Kuwait is continuing just before we came off of the air, came onto the air rather. Two British-made uh, tornado fighter bombers roared off this runway to my right, over to my left a short time before that. Two U.S.-made F-15s with their afterburners glowing streaked into the night sky, heading north, presumably toward targets in Iraq and Kuwait. Charles Jaco, CNN, reporting live from Saudi Arabia. Charles, your sense of uh, the comparative di uh, differences in activity levels between uh, uh, last evening or last morning for you and this morning? I'm sorry, uh, I'm having a bit of trouble. The comparative difference in what levels? The level of activity, uh, military activity. Right, it seems to be approximately the same. We had always assumed that when the attack against Iraq and Kuwait was launched, the sky would be filled with fighter bombers around here. That proved not to be the case. There were normal takeoffs of squadrons of two or four F-15s or tornadoes from these airfields at regular intervals. It's been pretty much the same level of activity this evening. About every, oh, 20 minutes, half hour or so, sometimes maybe longer, two or four of these jets at a time will roar into the sky and streak north, either toward Kuwait or toward Iraq. So it seems as if the level of activity around here is pretty much the same as it was last evening. Do you have a feeling for this uh, 
defection rumor and the denial of the rumor, why, why we're going through this exercise? Well, it seems to be a bit of confusion. On one hand, uh, the man who's denying it is a very senior military official here, the commander of all the joint Arab forces here. He says it's simply not true. However, uh, the Kuwaiti government exi in exile says their uh, sources in the Kuwaiti resistance inside Kuwait City and uh, fairly high-ranking Saudi political sources here say, indeed, there have been the defections. Now, obviously, one side or the other has access to information that the other side does not have, so it uh, may take some time uh, to sort this out, but uh, when you get into a war, it generally takes quite a bit of time to sort quite a few things out. Right. We'll study that one. Charles Jaco in Saudi Arabia. Donna. CNN's continued coverage of Operation Desert Storm continues. We'll be live from the State Department when we come back. Eggnog, mashed potatoes and gravy, Santa cookies, Aunt Wilma's bunt cake. The average American turkey, can gain four to seven pounds during the holidays, canes, and you're probably one of them. Sweet potatoes. So include the Kellogg Special K breakfast in your New Year's diet. Dip. And get the scale moving nuts, in the right direction. Fruit cake, fruit cake, fruit cake. Kellogg Special K. Lose the holiday fat. Federal Express is a good example. Key management types carry SkyTel's nationwide pages with voicemail. They keep up with business and each other. Because an important message is like a package. It absolutely, positively has to get there. SkyTel, that great communication system in the sky. For more information, call 1-800-456-ALL-3s. Pain. I don't see any alternative. I don't either. We have to go in. Have we gotten the parents yet? I have them on the phone, Doctor. They're out of the country. Fax them consent form. Stat. That's the only thing we're waiting on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Anyway. Doctor, I've got the parents' signatures. Excellent. Here we go. Dex facsimile, one of a wide range of business communication solutions from Fujitsu, the global computer and communications company. Coming Dow bathroom cleaner with scrubbing bubbles. It's 50% stronger than original Dow bathroom cleaner. We work even harder so you don't have to. Call 1-800-257-1257 and get your free video with 25 issues of the Sporting News for three payments of just $9.96. Save 52%. Call now, 1-800-257-1257. And CNN continues our coverage. We want to get the latest for you from the State Department with CNN's World Affairs correspondent, Ralph Begleiter. Ralph? In the first full day of fighting in the Gulf, diplomats here in Washington and around the world have apparently done little more than watch to see if the military pressure on Saddam Hussein might persuade him to give way and withdraw to stop the attacks. Pictures of Saddam Hussein are as close as the United States has come to talking with the Iraqi leader since the bombing of Baghdad began. U.S. officials say there has been no exchange of messages with Iraq, not even indirectly through other countries. The international coalition, now using force against Saddam Hussein, is offering no pause in the attacks to allow for diplomacy. We hope very much for a speedy end to hostilities. That will come about when Saddam Hussein withdraws totally and withdraws unconditionally from Kuwait. Our military action will continue until he comes to his senses and does so. Even the Soviets, who are not involved in the fighting, have not softened their line. Such a tragic turn was provoked by Iraqi leadership's refusal to follow the demands of the world community and withdraw its forces from Kuwait. 
The U.S. insists that the only thing which could now stop the attack would be an Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait and full compliance with the United Nations demand for restoration of Kuwait's previous government. Secretary of State James Baker has not talked with officials from any other nation, but has spent his time in meetings with Defense Secretary Dick Cheney, with CIA Chief William Webster, and with President Bush. His role is, as you all know, a friend and advisor of the president, a friend for over 30 years. Members of the European community can